to me, the great key in dealing with issues in the book of Abraham is to evaluate how we know things. As someone who is very actively engaged in an academic discipline, I'm, I'm actively an Egyptologist, I'm part of an excavation, I've served on national committees and national organizations, I publish actively, uh, I know the field of Egyptology from an academic viewpoint, and I know that we are always figuring out that things that we used to know or used to think we know are wrong. And it's hard to say what's likely because you never know what somebody's going to turn up. And you never know what's in the back rooms of museums. There are hundreds or actually thousands of unpublished papyri in the back rooms of, of museums that in many cases aren't even known to Egyptologists. Um, I went to one papyrus collection and floor to ceiling, wall to wall boxes. And I were told that these are papyri that have never been looked at. I can't use the history book I used to use because it's out of date. There are too many bad ideas in it and too many wrong facts. Five years from now, the things that we're teaching in our history classes we'll see are wrong. Some of the, the uh, research I'm involved in from my archaeological excavation is going to very clearly show that some things that everyone has taught for a hundred years about pyramids is dead wrong. We are always finding out that the things we've taught in the past are wrong. I have a number of colleagues whom I'm very grateful to who try to dig through this material and try to publish it. But one of them in, in publishing the material as recently as 10 years ago, after several major studies and hundreds of papyri said this amounts to less than 1% of the known material. I have never given a lecture on the Book of Abraham the same way twice because we've always learned something new by the time I give it again a month later. So it's hard to find something in print that is, is up to date. I've published a few articles. I'm working on a book about these very questions about the Book of Abraham. Uh, the problem that I'm dealing with is I'll never be able to be done because it will always be out of date soon thereafter. The situation is, of our understanding is very much different from Joseph Smith's day or from a hundred years ago or even fifty years ago. You know, presumably that's why archaeologists go out and dig is so you can find out something you didn't know before. And if you're going to find out something you didn't know before, then you're going to have to revise what you thought you knew. I spend a lot of time, my time answering questions from people who are honest seekers of truth, who have heard things about the Book of Abraham that, that trouble them. I know people who have lo lost their testimony and fallen away from the church over an Egyptological academic issue that now we've found out actually supported Joseph Smith as opposed to, to making it look like he was wrong. As we've continued to learn, we've found out that the thing that troubled them was just wrong yet they've still left the church. And I think how foolish that is to value what we learn in school when we know much of that is wrong, to value that more highly than to value what we learn from God. And so I think we should be very careful in how we determine the, the relative value of our sources of learning. And always remember, things learned from God are much more reliable than things learned from our finite minds.